So, off to Jupiter, spring training time, with my man, Louis Wiwi Zabala. I make him drive. At least he's not sleeping this time. Last time I slept, on the way to the Pro Bowl, I was asleep. Thanks. But anyway, it was a long drive. It was still dark out. Anyway, we're on our way to Jupiter. Check Got out. good stuff then too, though. We Jarvis did. Landry. We did. Jarvis Landry. We're hoping to get some good stuff today. Uh, obviously, the Marlins. It's going to meet the Marlins type of day uh, instead of meet the Mets because... There's a whole lot of new, <laughs> whole lot of new faces out there on the team, um, but thankfully, Lewis is a big baseball guy. I love baseball too, so we'll get it done. What are you looking forward to the most? I'm looking forward to seeing how Don Mattingly is gonna work through this roster together. Because he said on Saturday at Fan Fest that even he still has to learn a lot of the names here. So I think that's what I'm looking forward to the most is uh, him kind of navigating through the roster being able to field the team because there's still a few position spots available probably two or three you know it's funny outfield. We, we always go to, to first day of pitchers and catchers and the catchers like an afterthought so I'm looking forward to speaking to JT Ramuto yeah to see where his mind's at well he was because we've heard a lot right but we haven't heard from him we, we heard from him on Saturday he said he's not happy that those conversations with his agent about requesting a trade got uh, leaked made public um, but I think the thing about JT is he's, he is a pro, so I think he'll play wherever. But the Marlins definitely need uh, definitely need because the two other catchers on the roster right now, I don't I think they may have like seven games. You know, he's between the two of them. He's a young guy, and I'm start, I'm starting to come around on the whole Jeter thing, right? Just from having conversations with him and listening to what he has to say. Yeah. So I'm hoping JT can figure in, in two three years when this team is is really solid yeah if some of these prospects are really that good yeah he'll be right in the thick of it in the middle of that lineup yeah and potentially making the most money he can have on a good team here's the thing though with that is we asked jt have you spoken to Derek jeter yet and he said no okay. so you know at some point jeter's got to explain what he's doing to the players on the roster in the clubhouse he's that, explained it to us it, it sounds like he hasn't really explained it to them so i think that's where that's the next step for jeter he's got to actually reach out to some of these players you, look i know it's a business and you got to have some separation and you gotta you gotta put some distance between yourself and the players so you can actually make these moves yeah. with with your head not your heart but at some point when you want to keep your 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 good players, your studs, like a JT Rio Muto, a young guy who's cheap right now, you can have for the future, you gotta talk to him. And the other thing is, at a cornerstone position, right. because they don't grow catchers on trees. No, good this guy is right. the, one, probably the top, one of the top young catchers in the major leagues. No, he is. So if he's gonna be your cornerstone, you wanna have a communication with him to Absolutely. tell him, hey, listen, this is what we're doing. Yeah. This is where you fit in. Don't worry. And you know, they have, the, you know, there's these deals where, hey, you can tell a guy, hey, listen, we're gonna take care of you in the future. Yeah. Now you got to hold on to that word because um, in years past there's been a lot of that going on and, and guys, I mean, the whole roster was constructed back and loaded contracts where these guys aren't here now. They have these guys have a chance to really make that happen mm -hmm. with a young team and grow it yeah. how they want to grow it the Yankee way, like Jeter has said, and do it right. Right, and I think you nailed it right on the head uh, about JT being one of the best young. He was a borderline. Uh, all star. All star. I mean, maybe on any other team, he gets more all star votes. Um, but yeah, but when you see teams like the Astros and the Nationals showing interest in a guy, he's probably good. And you got to keep. And remember, you're going to have a young pitching staff. Yeah. I mean, these guys are. They need someone to, to talk to, talk them through a game. Somebody, and he's going to learn a lot from that too. Right. Him being a young, a young catcher. Yeah. You know, they can grow together. I think this could be a really good thing. Now you know everybody thinks it's a given that he wants to be traded. I'd give it a I'd give it a chance because if this organization is doing things correctly and he sees that he's a professional, yeah, he may get it done and he may be long in the long term plans, right. which he should be in my opinion in the long term plans right. of the I, organization. I think that starts with Derek reaching out, and we'll see that today. I think that's what Derek is coming up um, to spring training. He's going to be going back and forth. So I think, yeah, I think you're right. And not only setting the roster and finding rotation of pitchers, but yeah, the interaction between JT and uh, Derek Jeter. All right, we'll be there in about an hour. Yep, we'll be live at noon as well and live at 5 o'clock with reports.